Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm here to tell you about my testimony, how the Lord, how I met Jesus Christ, because many people want to know how I was saved. And, and I'm here to give my testimony to the glory of God. Hallelujah. First of all, before I start, I would like to tell you about, a little bit about myself. It all started, my story started before I was born. Uh, my mom used to tell me this when I was still a child. Growing up, I know the story. My, my, before I came into this world, my mom already have three kids. The first one is Ngani Majlan. The second one is Mwe Emilien. The, the third one is Engia Odil. So Engia Odil was like three years. And um, according to what my mom said, she went to see her friends, the neighbor. The neighbor just had a little baby girl. And uh, when she went there, her friends refused her, refused to allow her to touch the newborn baby. Each time when she would go there, they will not allow her to touch the baby girl. So she came back home, running, crying, crying. And my mom asked her, why are you crying? She told my mom that her friend will not allow her to have baby. And she begged my mom, please, mom, please, mom, I need a baby sister, please. I need a baby sister. And then my mom said, I'm not the one that gives baby. And you are asking for a baby girl. Only God can give baby. So if you want God to give me baby, pray. So um, my mom said pray. And then my mom took her uh, hand. She put her hand in my mommy tummy. So, and she pray. She asked God to give my mommy a baby girl. And according to what my mommy said, that very month, my mom conceived me. When she conceived me, you know, everything just came the same way like my sister prayed. I was a girl. During my mom's pregnancy, uh, according to what my mom says, her auntie, who was like my grandmom, she used to visit native doctor. So she came back home one day, she told my mom that, uh, that the baby you are carrying in your womb, you need to remove that baby. And my mom asked her why. She said she just went to visit a native doctor, and the native doctor told her that the baby is going to bring a lot of trouble. They, they need to remove that baby. You know, they, she tried everything to convince my mom that the baby in the womb, she need to remove the baby. But I thank God, my mom say she she will never remove a pregnancy she will keep it whatever it is 
you know, she will never remove the baby. That time my mom was not safe, but she feared God. I thank God because my uh, God did not allow my mom to listen to my grandma. You know, her auntie, it was like my grandma. God did not allow it. I thank God, praise the Lord. So my mom gave birth to me. And I was, the day she gave birth to me, I was still in the hospital. So she sent somebody to go and call my big sister, Odil. Odil, somebody went to call her. So she, they brought her in the hospital. My mom said she came to the hospital running because she needed to hold the baby girl that she prayed for. The baby girl, so she can even tell her friends. So she was so happy to touch me. She was so happy. You know, everybody was happy that there is a newborn big girl, baby girl in in the family. My mom said she even gave me a name. She named me. You know, it was everybody was even everybody was happy. But something very sad happened. Uh, came in my family. A bad news that came to break that happiness. My sister Odile became sick, a kind of sickness that you don't you don't know who why this happened. She just suddenly became to to fall on the floor, and when she fall in the floor, she will be shaking, things will be coming out from her mouth like a white liquid. My mom said, my daddy, they did everything. They did everything, nothing. And um, my dad went everywhere he could go to find an answer to if my sister could, could receive healing, nothing. But I believe it was the plan of God. Because after that, my sister became blind because that sickness even affects her sight. She couldn't see. It break all the nerves. She couldn't see anymore. But my father, after searching for, for, for help, no, no help, he even went to see native doctor everywhere, anywhere, you know, nothing. Then, thank God, the Lord used a pastor to pray for my sister Odile. My sister would see, uh, receive her sight. She just that she just starts seeing. Hallelujah. So because of that, my father gave his life to Jesus. My mom gave his life to Jesus. And me, I grew up in a, in a Christian family. I was taught that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. I remember how sometimes my father would Will, will bring me in the street outside when he's preaching I will be singing you know preaching about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ I'll be with my dad so I remember how my dad will wake me every five o'clock in the morning a.m. to pray me and my brethren my, my siblings to pray 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 I remember how my father taught us how to fast every Monday every Friday Every Monday, every Friday, whether you want or not, you must fast. That is how we grow up in the fear of God. My mom really feared God. My father really feared God. They gave up many things to please God. And my sister, Odile, you know, she was growing like that. Her brain was like the, the brain of a child. But physically, she grew up very well. Odi was very beautiful, you know, the most beautiful girls among us. Everybody talk about her beauty. And when somebody come to visit in the house, they say, ah, what's such a beauty? What, why, what this happened to this little, little girl? You know, she grew up like this, but something was special about Odile. Odile has a very beautiful voice a special voice a voice that can capture any kind of voice you just have to sing she will capture your voice and sing it like the original her, her brain 
was capable to to capture all the worship song. So Odi was kind of only worshiping God, although she doesn't know what she's saying because she grew up like that. The sickness came into her life when she was just like three years old. So she grew up like that, the brain like a child. All she knew is to say, uh, uh, sink, God, sink, 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 and sink all the praise to God, you know. But as I was growing with Odile, Odile, Odile among everybody in the family, Odile like only me. Odile would not allow anybody to feed her, only me. If she she need to to go to toilet, only me. If she need to bath, only me. If she need to eat, only me. You know, it was like that. I grew up when I was um uh, like around you know seven years, eight years. Me and Odile. She will not allow anything, anybody to touch her, only me. So that is how I took that gift of singing. I sing, people say I sing very well, but Odi sing 10 times, 3 times, 10 times, I don't know, more than me. She has a very beautiful voice. So, but one day I went to school, and in school, my my right eyes was paining me, and I couldn't read again. It was so painful, and I thought it's sand inside my eyes. Though, so I tried to do everything, nothing. And I was going home like this. When I went around back home, it was painful, you know. Then I went to tell my mom. I said, Mom, I can't see. Maybe there's something in my eyes. So she tried to clean it up, nothing. So... She said, open your eyes. When I open my eyes, she noticed that there is something white. You know, I don't know how they call it in English. You know, where that place, that black thing on top, it was white. You couldn't see it. You need to open, then you see. She said, something's white. This is the beginning of, a blind, of blindness. So my father noticed it. My father said, this is blindness. Oh, God. Well, what is this? So he did everything. They said that is blindness. Your, your, Mr. Mr. Tongo, we are sorry. Your daughter will be blind. So my father cried that day. I can remember how my parents cried. And me, myself, I was crying. I said, oh, God, what is this? My sister Odile is already sick. Odile is always falling down. She will shake. My father did everything. Now it's me, God, with blindness. Please, please, Father, please. And my father called me in, in the room. He told me to kneel down. He said, Claire, you know what? Only God alone can heal you because the doctor said that they have to remove their eyes. And a friend of mine, the daughter, the daughter, her, her daughter have the same thing. They put artificial eyes. I don't have that kind of money. You see your sister is sick. You too. You are just this blindness. What am I going to do? So kneel down. Ask God to forgive all your sins. And if possible, give your life to Jesus again. Cry to God. And as I was kneeling down, I was crying. My father too was crying. I told, I start asking God, God forgive me. All the, I'm stubborn because I was really stubborn. I was this stubborn, this kind of stubborn child. When my mom, my mom would tell me, go and do this, I would do something different. I, you know, I told God, God, forgive me all the pain I used to steal in school. Forgive me because when my mom would tell me to go and fetch water, I would go to fetch water, but I would, I would go and play and forget about the water. I told, my, I told God to forgive me. I cried to God. I said, God, please heal me. Heal me, please. If you heal me, I will obey you. My father, I remember my father said this to God. God. Before, yesterday, it was Odile. Now, it's Claire. If Claire is blind, who is going to feed Odile? Who is going to bath her? You know Odile cannot allow anybody to touch her. Even when we want to do it, Odile will not allow. Father, if Claire becomes blind, who is going to do it? Then, 
I don't know what he pray in his heart after that. Then when we finish, he asked me to go. My eyes was pain. If you see my eyes, it was red. I was just, it's like sand. I couldn't, the thing was, it's kind of growing more and more only in one day. But I tell God, when I went to sleep, the next day, my, the thing was gone. That thing in my eyes was gone. My mother, they couldn't believe it. My father, everybody. Even my father, when he go outside to preach, <laughs> He would tell people, he say, God has delivered my daughter for blindness. He, he was so happy. We thank God for what he has done. Hallelujah. So it's a testimony that even my dad today, he always remember, remind me that testimony, that miracle God did in my life. You know, that healing only God could do. Hallelujah. I praise God. So everything became to normal. Oh, this sickness, although that the Lord delivered her from blindness, but her case didn't change. Her brain was still the same. And joy came in my life, in, in our family, because we were used with her sickness. We were used. It was like a normal thing in my family. So, but something happened in the years when she was uh, 17 years, and Mia was... 14 years of age. Odile just started to develop a kind of a strange cough. You know, it all started like a, like a joke. I thought she was kind of imitating somebody. The, the, cough, the cough began intense. Then after, it became like, I don't know, it finally killed her. She died. And the day she died, before she died, the last word that Odile said, was hallelujah. Odil all we know about Odil is that she sink because her brain was recording songs. But how come that her last words was hallelujah? So we praise God for that. We believe that Odil is in heaven because her sickness came into her life was she was three years so she grew up as a child like although that she was growing up as a physically you know you see her like but her brain was the brain of a little baby a little girl of three years and the last word was hallelujah i thank god but her death really break my heart i couldn't imagine myself without odile because she was she she was part part of me. Odile, I know she was sick, but she was part of me. How could you imagine that Oji can just die like that? I was even my my mother was devastated. I believe I, I remember how my mom she was wearing only that clothes for almost six months. My mom could not believe what she can just go like this. She was a blessing to my family. She can sing all the praise, all the worship. I just thank God. But the thing devastated me at my age of 14 years. I was just asking why, why, why is this happening to our family? So I became very, very disobedient, more rebellious. I even, all the things that my father taught me about Christ, about God, I've, I forgot. Even the encounter that I had about, about Christ, I forgot. I want to tell you about the first encounter that I had with Christ. When I was six years old, my parents, after we prayed, my father, they asked us to go to bed. And as I grew up, my father never allowed us to sleep with light because in Cameroon, we pay for, for light, electricity. So to avoid excessive bills, he would ask us to off light. So that night, we, my daddy off the light, we went to bed. And something happened in my sleep. 
a bright light came inside my room and I saw heaven open. And when the heaven opened, I saw a ladder that was coming out from heaven in my room. And through that ladder, I saw Jesus Christ coming down from that ladder. Immediately, I knew it was Jesus Christ, although I was six years or seven years or so. I knew, I knew that it was Jesus Christ. And the light was so bright. All the, the darkness that was in my room disappeared. And then he came near my, like this. He didn't touch the earth, but he, he, he didn't touch the, the, the floor of my room, but he stayed in that ladder. Then he told me, he said, if you read my word, if you read and obey my word, look at what I will give you. And when he said, look at what I will give you, I saw a big city, a great city, beautiful city with big, big building, very, many lights. That is what I saw as he was speaking like this. He said, if you read and obey my word, and those words come, was writing themselves in the world. If you read and obey my words, as he, Jesus was speaking, the word was writing himself in the world he said if you read my word if you read and obey my word this is what i will give you then i saw a very beautiful city and then when he spoke like this i saw him turning and go to heaven and he was dressed like a king he was so beautiful then he turned he went to the ladder again went to heaven and the ladder went and the heaven was closed and my room become normal. That was the first encounter I had with Jesus. And when I grew up, I knew that if I read the word of God, if I obey, God is going to give me a great, a great city. Every time that city will be coming in my mind, I was thinking, is it a city here on earth or a city in heaven? But now I know that it's the city that God is preparing for me in heaven, if I read and obey in his word. So, when Ozzy died, the thing just came, everything changed. I even forgot, I even, I was angry, but God, I said, ah, why God will allow such thing to happen in our family? My mom, my father, why this? I even forgot about the, the encounter I had with Jesus. I just start doing my own things. I became stubborn. My father even discovered that I didn't like school anymore. He said, okay, Claire, you have to choose what you want to do in life. You don't want to go to school again. Okay, I want you to do nursing. So he put me in a college to study nursing. To tell you the truth, I'm a very... God gave, I'm smart at school, but I never put my mind on it anyway. Because in my heart, when I became stubborn like this, I said, I want to be, I want to be a famous musician. You know, God gave me a gift of singing. I said, okay, when I will finish this college, I will go to, 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 I will be a musician. I will start recording songs. So as I was going to college, I will be, I'll be doing things that God does not like. When I finished college, I didn't even wait for the graduation to come. I left like this, even graduation, I even dashed, dashed it, you know. I graduated, I had the graduation, but I didn't go to take it because I said, okay, I've done what my father asked me to do. Now I want to do what I want to do. Nobody will control me. I was so stubborn. I was so stubborn. I even denied God. I reject God. Each time that vision will come, the vision that encounter I have with Christ, will say, Claire, stop what you are doing. Remember, Jesus appeared to you when you were small and told you that if you read the word of God, if you obey the word of God, it will, go, it will, it, it will give you that great city. You don't want to have that beautiful city. I will say to that voice, leave me alone. I want to live my life the way I want to live. Then, I start singing in pubs at a young age in Douala, 
in Yaoundé, I will be going to a, a city, to another city, to be singing in pop. I start smoking cigarettes. I start drinking alcohol. I even went into prostitution. Prostitution. I even graduated from prostitution. Then I decided, I said, okay, Cameroon is not more my level. I have to go to Europe to expand. So I came to Europe. Instead to come back to Christ, I sank into sin. I began to sing in pop. I sang in, 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 in Holland. I, from Holland to Paris. I even did from a French competition. It's like X Factor. You know, among, among 15,000 15, people, I, you know, in, they selected five people in bedroom. I was among, among them. But God did not allow me to, to be to to be a musician in the world because I was singing like this in the in the world. I was singing with all that popularity. God did not allow me. Each time that vision will come clear. You need to come back to Christ. Remember the vision the Lord showed to you when you were small. He said, if you read the word of God and obey, don't you want God? Don't you want obey God? Don't you want God to give you that great city He showed you when you were a little child? I will reject the voice of God. I sank into, I, I was deep into prostitution. I, I found myself pregnant. I came here in Ireland. I, even with pregnancy, I was doing prostitution. Any man that want to sleep with me, as far as you have money, I will just agree. You give me money. That is how I was doing my life, up and down. I was not thinking about God. I, I forgot about all the good things that God did in my family, how it, how he healed me from blindness, how he healed my big sister from blindness, how he showed himself to me when I was a child, how my mom used to pray for us, my mom and my dad showed me the way to, to heaven. I rejected it. I came to Europe. I was carried away by money because I sing in pop here in Biaba in Dublin. They pay me good money. When I sing in pop, they pay me good money. And what I was doing with prostitution, they pay, they pay me good money. So I was saying, why, why must I give my life to Jesus? Why must I, must I give my life to Jesus? I was, my, my conscience was dead. If I, somebody speak, told me about Jesus Christ, I would be laughing at that person. I say, only poor people give their life to Jesus. I don't need it. I'm in Europe. I'm fine. I don't need it. But... Brethren, I thank God because God, He never gave up until your breath leaves your body. Jesus never gave up on me. I'm the one that rejected God. I'm the one that turned my back away from God. But God never left me. He was, he was there waiting for me to give my life to Him. I remember that night February 2009, I was in my sitting room smoking again. I was smoking like a mad person. I smoked. Before that packet finished, I have another packet. I was smoking for no reason. I was, I was addicted to it. I love to smoke. I would drink. I have a group of girls. They would come in my house, would party, put music dance all kind of music, smoke, curse, do things. I have a man. I have children with him. I don't care. I don't, you know, my life was just like that. I was just like that. I was the, my own master. But I thank God that night, God prepared that night for me. God arranged that night for me. Only God that night was able to open my eyes, was able to touch my heart. That night, the Lord changed me. God changed my life. I remember I was watching this testimony, Daniel Ekechuku. Oh, my brother, Daniel Ekechuku, may God bless you. If it's not for your testimony, I don't know where will I be today. 
I was watching this testimony of Daniel Ekechuku. This Nigerian man that died for after he raised up after four days. The Lord used his testimony to touch me. After watching his testimony, I found myself on the floor, kneeling down, crying. God, I said, I've been far from God. Oh Lord, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Oh, Father. Then I start to remember how Jesus Christ appeared to me when I was a child. How Jesus Christ came inside my room and told me that if you read my word, if you obey my word, look at the great city. I say, God, forgive me. Forgive me, Father. Oh, Father, forgive me. If only you can forgive me. I'm a prostitute. I'm a disobedient child. I'm stubborn. Forgive me. I was on my floor, on my knee. Nobody preached to me. God touched me that night. I begin to confess all my sin. And then I call everybody that I've ever offended. Then that, that the next day, I call all of them. I say, look, I am a new person now. Please, you remember one day I insult you like this. Forgive me. I call the pop because I used to sing in pop. I call that Irish man. I say, look, I'm not coming back in your, your pop again. I'm a new person. Forget the bad pop. You will never see me again. From now on, I have decided to follow Jesus Christ. I call my friend. We used to do prostitution together. I say, look, I'm no more doing all that useless thing again. Even the client, I call them. I say, look, don't ever call me again. From now on, I have decided to follow Jesus Christ. That morning, I was searching for my Bible. I found that I have a very old Bible. I took that Bible. I started looking for a church. It was like a Wednesday morning. Looking for a church on a Wednesday morning. Looking for who will preach me the love of Jesus Christ. Ah, I wish my mom was still alive. In 2001, when my mom died, day, two days before she died, she told me, Claire, abandon that life you are living. That love will only lead you to hell. My daughter, please, stop singing in pops. Give your life to Jesus. I didn't, I didn't obey my mom. I wish my mom was here to see me now. I remember how my mom used to fast for me. When I, I went away for God, I remember how one day I went to my village with provision, with food. I, because I was singing in pub, I, has, I have money. I went with money I gave to my mom. My mom said, no, I can't take your money. Because your money is a dirty money. You got it from prostitution. I can't take your money. Claire, come back to Christ. My mom, I wish she was here <laughs> to see how Jesus changed my life. <laughs> Jesus made me a new person. God changed me. I never knew I can be like this. I never knew God can break somebody. I never knew God can change me. Me that was a prostitute. I was like a dog. I will sleep with any man. As far as you have money, I will sleep with you. I remember how I will leave my children upstairs. I will be sleeping with a man in the city room. I remember how I would be smoking all over the house. I remember how, how I used to dress. I would show my pant. I would show anything. I remember how, how I used to be aggressive, insulting people. But the Lord that they touched me, God, God transformed me. He transformed me. He forgave me. He made me a new person. As I was searching for him, he was there right to me. As if he was just waiting for me to give my life to him. The way God directs me, I don't know how to explain. Today, I'm just thanking God. The Lord started to change my life. 
all those my friends they ran away because light cannot cope with darkness Sometimes they will come clear. Is it true? They told us we want to come and see. I say it's true. You better give your life to Jesus before it's late. Heaven is real. Heaven, hell is real. If you die now in, in sins, you will go to hell. You better come to Christ. What Christ has done in my life, he can do it for you. I abandon everything. Client, I remember there is one client, you know, he used to call me. I told him I give my life. I gave my life to Jesus. One day he called me again. I said, if you ever call me again, I will take your number. I will go and give it to police. They will trace you and put you to jail for harassment. I told you that I don't need your money. I have given my life to Jesus. Nobody will come and change my mind. This truth I know has set me free. And God will help me to the end. I was so determined. Determined. I remember, you know, it's not easy to give up cigarette because as I was addicted to cigarette, I gave my life to Jesus, but I still smoke. So I, at first I said, God, I want to leave cigarette. I went to hospital. They did everything. I couldn't stop. So I knelt down. It was in my kitchen. I took cigarette. I said, God. This is my last packet of cigarette. Allow me to smoke this one. But if I ever smoke again, I will take this vow for you because if I keep on waiting for me to give up cigarette, I will never give up cigarette. I might end up in hell. Now, Father, if I ever smoke again after this one, kill me. I say, kill me. Don't allow me to repent again. If I, if, if I smoke this, I finish to smoke this one. After this one, if I smoke again, kill me. Then after I say, ha, ah, this vow that I've made like this, I will stick on it and I will never smoke again. So that last cigarette, I have that packet, I smoke it very well. I made sure that the last one, I smoked that one very well, knowing that that was my last cigarette. I smoke it. I put it in the bin. I took it again. I smoked it very well. I did to make sure it was the last one. Then after, I washed my mouth. I said, God, I will never, ever smoke again. So I stopped smoking. Even the pop I used to sing, I called the manager. I said, I'm not coming back again. One day he called me. He said, Claire. You know you have a talent. You can sing. Okay. Even though you refuse to sing um, a song, you can come and sing Christian songs. We will still pay you. I said, never. If I come back to sing Christian song in pop, what if I start speaking in tongues? What will you, how will you be fulfilled? You will take me like a mad person. No, I, I, I don't want to come back there. The man did everything. I said, no, I don't want to come back there. Because I knew that if I go back to that pub, you know, I, I can go back in my own life again. So somebody even said, Claire, you know what? The way you are doing it like this, you, 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 you won't make it. You won't make it. Oh, you won't make it. You are, you are doing too far. I say, yes, please. I want to go to heaven. I'm not joking. I've made up my mind and nothing will change it. So I was looking for church and God helped me to find a place where I will worship him. So I was really serious with God. I, I, I was really serious, really serious with God. Not allow anything that will come between God and me. So I remember one Sunday after church, you know, I, I was so tired. Me and my children, we went to bed. It was, and we went to bed like this. I fell into sleep. Deep in my sleep, in my room, I saw, I saw in my room, I saw a white horse, a white horse. Then I found myself, I stood up for my bed. I started binding the horse because I got scared when I saw the horse. The horse was looking at me in the eyes like this. And I look at the horse. 
I, I start binding the, the horse. I start binding the horse. Then I heard a voice. That voice, I could not see that voice. But I knew the, that voice was in my room. It was somebody. I can't see the person. And that voice looked like a friend. It looks like that, that, that voice has been, has been with me for a long time since I gave my life with, uh, for Jesus. So the voice told me, say, Claire, why are you binding the, the, the horse? Look at the horse very well. Then I look at the horse. I noticed that the horse is a nice horse. And the horse came as if it was, they, they, they sent him to come and deliver a message. It looked as if it's bringing me somewhere. As I was looking at, at the horse, the horse ran like this, enter me. When the horse entered me, I found myself going up, 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 up. As I was going up like this, the earth was, 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 was becoming small, 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 small. I was going up in heaven. And I noticed that the earth is so dark, very, very dark. And then even though it was dark like this, I could see, I could see a man. The man has a cutlass and, and his, in his hand. He was cutting another, another human being with cutlass. And I told the man, I said, stop, 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 stop. What you are doing is no good. Stop, stop, stop. The man could not hear me. I was keep on saying, stop, stop, stop. The voice that was with me, he said, hmm, the man cannot, cannot hear you. He can't see you. Only you can see him. Only you can hear him. Can I said, ah. What do you mean the man cannot see me, cannot hear me? I hope I'm not dead, though. Please, I have three kids. I'm alone. I'm a single mother. Please, I, I don't want to die now. You know, this thing looks like I'm dead. I hope I'm not dead. The man said, no, you are not dead. You understand? I just want to show you something. I said, I said that means that I'm dead. If you want to show me something, that means that I'm dead. Please, I don't want to die. I have three kids. I don't want to die. After, the man said, you look, you see the earth. You see how the earth is, is dark. It's not the darkness like you, uh, human being sees. This darkness represents the sin that is in the world. He was telling me like this. Then I noticed that that voice was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because he has, he was, he has this, the voice was so calm, like a friend. Then I noticed that he's God. So I was calm. Then I've, after the earth disappeared, I couldn't see that darkness again I, can't, I couldn't see earth again what i saw i saw heaven i saw her first heaven i saw another heaven so that first heaven second heaven then i saw my place to, i saw myself in another place again another heaven so in that heaven it was strange you know it's not that kind of place like you you hear about a testimony heaven they will say they saw big big houses they saw gold this i don't know so what i saw was just clouds i don't know why it was clouds clouds on my right clouds on my left clouds on my in front of me clouds behind behind me clouds everywhere and where i was standing clouds so what i i remember i, I start touching the clouds i start touching the cloud i say eh so this is how cloud, cloud is beautiful. I say, wow, it's beautiful. I was contemplating the cloud. I say, ah, this is heaven. Heaven is beautiful. Wow, it's so beautiful. And that voice that traveled from my room with me, that was with me from that journey, was with me there. The voice said, look up. Then I look up in the, in the, in the cloud. I saw two eyes in the cloud. And then I saw nose, and then I saw mouth. Here was cloud. Here was cloud. Everywhere was cloud. All I could notice is, th is those two eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And then the mouth starts to speak. The nose, the mouth say, "I'm doing clear. I'm doing clear. I'm doing clear. You are not worthy to be here. You are not worthy to be here." And then in my heart I say, "How can I'm not worthy to be here?" Jesus Christ died for me. My sins have been washed by the blood of Jesus. I wanted to be here. Then I immediately, I saw in, in, in the right hand of that figure, I saw another, another person. The person was standing like he's praying. 
the person will say, Father, give me only two minutes. Two minutes. I still have people on earth. I still have people in Cameroon. Father, please give me two minutes. Only two minutes. I still have people on earth. I still have people in Cameroon. Father, give me two minutes. Only two minutes. I still have people, people on earth. I still have people in Cameroon. He was keep on saying it and saying it and saying it. I remember. I have the verse. Uh, uh, there's one verse that's, that says in the Bible that Jesus is interceding for us in the right hand of God. So I remember when I was thinking about it, the same voice that traveled with me, he said, look behind. Then I looked behind me like this. I saw an angel. Imagine the tallest building on earth. That was the height of that angel. The angel was tall and the angel was dressed in a white robe. The angel was coming towards me. And the angel was the angel was singing a very beautiful beautiful melody. Then I was carried away from that from, from that beautiful melody. And then what I noticed, the angel disappeared. When the angel disappeared, I was looking. Then the voice said, Claire, the angel was there. Now the angel is, has disappeared. It does not mean that the angel is not more there. The same way, Claire, when you will go down there, I am. I will be around you, even though you don't see me. Always know that I will be around you. That's how that voice said. Immediately when the voice spoke like this, my phone rang. When my phone rang like this, I, st I stood up, I took the phone, and then it was my friend, one sister in Christ. I said, sister, 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 please call me back. Call me back. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. Then she said, sorry, 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 sorry. Then when I dropped the phone, I noticed that it was a vision I just had. Then I said, ah, so Jesus is interceding for me. But as I called my brother, uh, brother Eve. I told brother, I said, ah, brother, oh, this is what happened. No, oh. Jesus was interceding and saying that, begging, begging uh, 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 God, say, Father, give me two minutes. Only two minutes. I still have people on earth. So for me, I was thinking that because I see in the church, God, maybe uh, because he said Cameroon, he said earth. I said, ah, maybe God want to use me, my music. So I better start working on my songs. So I start writing my songs. I even went to studio. I record some uh, 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 go, uh, 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 gospel songs. So I even called one of my friends in Cameroon. She's a journalist. I said, look. I think God want me to come to Cameroon. God want to use me. I don't know. But I think it's music. Because Jesus Christ was saying that God should give him two minutes. Two minutes. He still have people on earth. So I believe that God want me to, to want to use me. So I was, I called my friend and said, look, this is my plan. I will come to Cameroon about the music. Let me finish with my album. I will come to Cameroon about my music. This, this, I was working on it. So that was my plan. So, as time was going on, I was working on my music, Christian music. I even made up my mind that if I finish with my album, I will not sell it. I will do it for the, to, I will use my voice to evangelize. That was my plan. So, throughout those things, time passed, months passed. I was keep on thinking about that vision. I have to do something because God wants to use me. And I thought that God wants to use my voice. So I was working on it. I went to studio. I paid for songs, for music songs. I was so, so excited to finish my album quick and travel, go to Cameroon to evangelize through my music. But my church had a three-day fasting, a program. So I decided to join that three-day fasting in the church. So... We have to go to church and sleep in the church. I went there with my three kids. So my the purpose of that church is to 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 know God more. You know, if there are weak points in your life, you have to fast for God to deliver you. So me, I have my other weak point spiritually. So I went to to fast to fast with my children for God to to deliver me from those things. So when I went there with my children, the first day was all right. The second day, when we finished the fast, I went to uh, uh, 
feed my children. I put them to bed. Me, myself, I went to bed. So when I went to bed, something happened. I found myself with my children in a church. And the church, the, the, the young people were doing a drama. When the young people were doing drama, I was carried by the drama looking. But immediately, I saw like I was taken in spirit. You know, my spirit left that place. I found myself in a place like a big restaurant. Lots of people in that restaurant. And, and the Holy Spirit was like the scanner. He was scanning everybody in that restaurant. And, and the Holy Spirit stopped at one, one man. The man was eating his food. When the Holy Spirit stopped at that one man, the, um, the, 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 he did the scanning make noise like... The scan made noise. I can see the man's name. And he said, among all those people, only this man is my child. Then the Holy Spirit took me to another place again. A big country. He said, around all those people, only one person is my child. Then another place again, he said, only one person. So I was saying that, hey, um, you know, children of God, many Christians that are giving their life to Jesus. How come that in a whole country, only one person is a child of God? So I was, I was wondering, as I was wondering like this, my eyes open. Then I look up. I saw heaven open. Heaven open. I saw a host of angels. They were all of them sitting on horses, horses coming and, and as if they are going to war. You know, and I can just hear that sound, sound of horses. Pum, 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 pum. And then I and you know, and I noticed that the the all of them were like a tree, you know. Jesus in the uh, middle, uh, angel, uh, angel in the left and right, sitting on the horses, going to, as if they are going to war. And then I say, ah, Jesus, where are they going like this? They didn't even look at me. They just passed. You know, they just passed. Then after they landed on earth, I explained this vision on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube, you click, my church is dirty. You will, you will listen to it very well. So Jesus landed on earth and then he came down from the horse. He was going to open the church. Then he couldn't open the church. And when he wanted to open the church, he said, my church is dirty. No, I can't go in. I can't go in. My church is dirty. And Jesus looked at his angel like this. He wanted to open the church again. He said, no, my church is dirty. I can't go in. Jesus was really, you know, you know that he wasn't happy. Then as he was going back towards his horses, I saw in the left hand side and right hand side, uh, hand side, hand side children of God. All of them were saying, Jesus, take us with you. Take us with you. Take us with you. And then, you know, Jesus was doing like that. He don't even look at them. He said, no, my church is so dirty. My church is dirty. I can't go in. And Mia was doing, ha, ah, ah. ha. And what I noticed all the children of God, they were naked. Naked. That is when I, I stood up. When I stood up, you know, I, I was, I started praying. I said, God, anything that is me that can hinder me from heaven, please forgive me, forgive me. And I went and looked other sister there, I told them, I said, Jesus want to come, but the church is dirty. Then they asked me, which church? Because we were praying in the church. So they thought maybe it's that church. I said, no. There is no name. This is the, the church of the body, the church. Everybody that did, all the church that, that, that preach about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ want to come, but we, we are not ready. A lot of dirtiness in the church. So after I went to God, I prayed, I said, ah, this, this vision, Jesus, what is really dirty inside the church? Tell me, Father, what is really inside, dirty inside the church? You know, then after, on, in August, Two, two, two months later, I saw myself again in the dream. I was going to see a pastor. The pastor, I, I look at the pastor. I say, Pastor, I want to drink water. The pastor say, No, uh, if you want to drink water, go in my garden. There is a well there. So, okay, I went there. I looked for the well. I saw the well. I, I want to fetch water. As I want to fetch the water, a voice told me that in that water, there is a strange power. Then as I, 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 I stepped back. I said, any strange power in this well, manifest yourself, 
manifest yourself in the name of Jesus. Any strange power in this world, manifest yourself. As I was saying, manifest yourself. Fire was coming out through my tummy like, uh, uh, like this. No, before fire coming to my tummy, I saw a, a human, you know, a strange being coming out for, from the world like this. You know, a very proud personality. And it was a woman. When she came out, I noticed a little children, small, small children around her. Then she said, yes, what do you want from me? I said, ah, each time when I come here from this place, this is where I look for, for, for water. So you, you see, so you, you used to see me. She said, yes, each time when you come here, I, I see you. I said, come out from this water in the name of Jesus. Come out from this water in the name of Jesus. She said, you are not the one that invites me. If you want me to leave this place, go and ask the sister. They are the one that invites me. You know, if they, want, if, if they are the one that, oh, they, they are the only one that can remove me from this place. You know, I, was, I, I, I look around to see if there's any sister. I was told that those sisters went to market. You know, then, I, then she even pointed me three pastors that she has already. Then I asked her, I said, what is your mission? She said, her mission is to quench the fire of God in the men of God. And she pointed me three men of God that she's, she has already quenched the fire of God in, in them, including the one that was that told me to come and fetch water. So I didn't want to go and, and, and look for that one. So I ran and go and look for another pastor. I saw the pastor. I said, Pastor, the queen of the course is in, in the church. Please come, let us fight. So the pastor came like this. He said, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Then I saw the queen of the coast. She started laughing. She said, you. The fire of God that is in you. is just like a candle. If I do like this. Phew, the candle will go off. I said, pastor. Look. Can you, can you listen? She said, please let us fight. Let us fight. As we were fighting. I was fighting. Only me was fighting really hardly. But the pastor was, was doing like this. Then I, I, I stood up. I said, what type of dream is this? The queen of the coast in the church. What has really have the women done that the queen of the coast is boasting and saying that only the sister in Christ must allow her to go? So I start thinking, I say, huh, this thing, I don't want to say it out, so I keep it for myself, you know. Then the next month, September 6, 2011, this is really touched my heart and changed all my life. I saw an angel of God. I don't know why this angel of God is in the dream. I know I knew it was a messenger from God. She came and she was surrendered by by uh, uh, um, cl uh, you know cloud, and then she was in the middle and she tied her hair. She tied her hair and she dressed very godly with with long skirt, very godly. Then she called my name. She said, "Claire, I'm done." You are on the way to heaven, the way of holiness. Holiness is the only way to heaven. Without holiness, nobody can see God. Then she pointed, she pointed the earth like this. Then she said, two women started just like you, but look at what happened. Then when she said, look at what happened, I could see those two women talking to each other. One was saying that, look, let us serve God with all our heart. Let us serve, serve God in holiness and dress the way God wants. And let us also go and warn all the other sisters. Let them know that God wants them to dress too inside and, and, and dress too holy outside. So immediately I saw those two sisters going to a midst of other Christians. And those Christians were women. Those women were children of God, born again children of God. And they were worshipping God. They were worshipping God with all their heart. And they were praising God. And those two women came in their midst saying that, yes, you people are worshipping God. It's good. But God does not like the way you people are dressing. Change your dressing style. So as they were talking to those sisters, those sisters did not listen to them. Those sisters made as if they, they, they had not seen those two women. So, and those two women, they got discouraged, discouraged. One of them said, is it really God that sent us? Is it really true that if a child of God wear trousers, jewelries, all those things will not make heaven? As they were saying like this, one said, 
maybe it's not God that sent them. When they say like this, the angel of God that was with me say, that is the spirit of confusion among those two women. Now you go. Make sure you don't do the same mistake. Go and tell women. You know, warn women. When she tell her, I just knew that God want me to go and warn women. Tell them about that dressing. That you should not only praise God, you should not only worship God with your mouth, but it has to show outside. That was what I knew in the dream that this is the mission God want me to do. And she said, anything God want, anything you want to do for God, do it now. Now, do it now. And she insisted. Then she said to me, you still have some debt in your life that you don't want to pay. Make every effort to pay your debt. Because anyone that refuses to pay his debt, God will reject such, such person. Then I stood up. I stood up. I was so scared. I said, ah, who is going to believe me? I'm a French person. I speak French. Who is going to believe me? How women will believe me? Where am I going to start? Then I said to God, me, I can't do this. Oh, this, too, this mission is too much for me. And I was so scared because I, I can remember, I could remember how the angel of God told me that I should make sure that I don't get discouraged, that I, I don't do the same mistake like those two women. That voice was keep on coming on me, you know. Then I, I, I slept. When I slept the next day, God showed me another vision. I saw a white man. The white man was preaching in an altar. As he was preaching, he, he was falling down like this. He was falling down. Then a young man came and said, the message God gave you to give to those people, if you fail to give them, their blood is in your hand. Brethren, that is why, that is where I got very scared. I called my pastor. I said, Pastor, this is what I saw. I don't know what to do. This is what I saw. I need to talk to the women. I need to tell them, God want me to go and warn women. So I thank God. My pastor, I went to his office. I spoke to him. He told me, he said, look, <laughs> women don't want to hear this kind of message. Women don't want to hear this kind of message. They are not ready. But you know what to do? And I don't know. Even churches, I don't think they will allow you to come and, and, and give the testimony. They all, you, will face, you will face a lot of trouble. You, this, this is a ministry God has given to you. And, and it's this ministry concerning women. But you know what? Concerning our church, I will allow you to testify. So I thank God I testify in my church. Although that, you know, I face a lot of challenges. But all I know in my heart is that I have to go and, and, and warn women, and warn women about this dressing of a matter. Because these days, they say God look only inside. And women neglect the fact that their body is to glorify God as well. Then I start asking myself, I say, ah, God, I'm a little bit confused. Because I'm a, I used to be a musician in the world. And I have a beautiful voice. I want to sing. Everybody know me as a musician, as a gospel musician. How am I going to combine the music and this mission? Because this mission, I need to go all over churches, warning women. Then I pray. I didn't know God heard my prayer. I saw myself again in this dream. I saw a sister. This sister, she can sing. She has a beautiful voice. And I was sitting near her. I said, sister, hmm, you have a beautiful voice. Do you know that me too I can sing? She said, yes, I know. But God has given me a mission that I should go and warn women. I don't know how I'm going to combine it with my music career. She said, I know. But you better concentrate on the mission the Lord has given to you. For now, Put music aside. Put the, the gospel music aside. Concentrate on what the Lord, she was saying, that concentrate on what the Lord asked you to do. Go and warn women. And she touched the skin. She said, look, go and tell women that their, 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 their flesh, the flesh and their desire must be crucified on the cross. Tell them that the flesh and their desire must die. 
that is when I stood up. I said, God, so I have to give up my music. I have to concentrate on this thing. This is serious. So, my brethren, I said, God, help me. Where am I going to start? Give me boldness. I thank God that God has been there for me. I tried to go to other churches, although that many pastors, they told me that they will call me. They never call me. Some, some of them, they take my number. They said they will call me. They never call me. One of them, even when I, I, I call him, he say, oh, he say, go and stop calling men of God up and down. Go and see your pastor. Let your pastor call me. Then you, the pastor will, will, will arrange with me. So I went to see my pastor. Until now, nobody, nobody has ever called me. So I was facing, I will go to a, see, see another pastor. I will sit down. I will explain to him. The pastor know that this one is coming from God. But because, I don't know, for one reason to another, they will not allow me to testify. And I remember why. The Lord told me that I should not get discouraged. He knew that it won't be easy. That people are not ready to hear this type of message. But I thank God that he, he, he always, he, he has been there for me. And every time I will see in my dream, somebody will come and tell me, Claire, don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Tell women, tell women. One day I remember, I was in my sitting room. I was watching one woman of God. She was reading the word of God. As she was reading the word of God, she has earrings. And you know, somebody like me, that you have seen this revelation, if it's with, like, freshly like this, if you see somebody putting on those things, you see what, you know, the pain in my heart. So when I watched it, I, I, I couldn't continue again. I went, when I went upstairs and said, God, women of God, they've read this passage concerning how a woman must not adorn themselves. Father, how would I go to them? How would I go to them? So I was crying that very night. The Lord showed me a group of Kenyan women. Those Kenyan women were filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of them, they were with attachment, earrings, with uh, makeup, trousers. But they were filled with the Holy Spirit. I saw them praying over a, a Jehovah Witness. They were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to that Jehovah Witness. As they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to that Jehovah Witness, the Jehovah Witness received Jesus Christ. And immediately he started speaking in tongues. That I saw a young man near me. He said, Claire, you see these women? They have a pure heart. A pure heart. They have not heard about the message God gave to you. Don't push them away. You know what you have to do? Instead to just push them away, because what I used to do, I will, when I see a woman wearing like this, I will, I will just say, this woman, this woman is going to hell. I will not go to that woman and tell her. So God was telling to me, instead to push them away, go in the sitting room, wait for them there. So I obey. I went to the sitting room. When those women, those women saw me, they said, that is the servant of the Most High God. Let's sit down and hear what you have to tell us. When they sat down like this, I just opened my mouth. And say, I, say, I told them, I said, yes, you people are preaching. But the way you people are dressing, God does not like it. If you continue to dress like this, God will throw you to hell. As I was talking to them like this, immediately I saw them. When they started removing Hearing, they remove, they remove, they start confessing that. And I even noticed some men dead. Even those men were repenting. I, I, I stood up. Then God want me to really, I have to go and warn women. If I see them dressing like this, I should not stay on my own. I have to go and warn them. They, they, and tell them the danger of disobeying the word of God concerning modesty. And that is what I'm doing. My, my sister in the Lord. And the Lord continued to show me. One day he showed me a group of people that just died. In the queue of these people, I noticed this sister. This sister, when her turn came, a book of life was open. Anyone that his name was not written in the book of life was thrown to hell. And this sister, she appeared before the angel. 
the angel say your name is not in the it's not in the book of life and then she say check very well i'm a born again i used to go in so 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 church the angel of god say yes we know you but look at the way, the way you dressed when you were on earth they told you to change your your dressing you refuse they told you to throw your trousers you refuse they told you to drop all those worldly appearance you refuse and this is what is this worldly appearance this is what sending you to hell i saw this woman the other way she start crying oh she cried she cried but it was too late they threw her to hell and i remember this i said god help me god help me all my dream i will see again the lord i saw i saw a group of christians all of them they were praising god among them i saw a young woman this woman she was praising god i noticed she was praying 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 you can notice that she really love god but i saw a tiny earring don't this man came as a young man he came he said to he said you see that sister she said she loved god she, yes she, even though she pray and fast for 40 days because of this little little one this little verse that she refused to obey she read that a woman must not adorn herself with gold and pierce but she reject that word and she's praying if she die now god would reject her because she has she has not to she has rejected that that verse and then i will say hey hey with the way I see Christianity today, oh, in, in Oibo, uh, white people, they say God does not look at appearance. You will see pastors, you will see everywhere. In fact, even the little church that you even see some people there, the women are dressing holy. You will see those women inside the church, they dress holy. Outside, they are like the world. When you ask them, they say, Look, oh, that was the last days. That was uh, before. Do now is modern Christianity. So I say, ha, ah, Father, what will I do? But I thank God that He has given me a boldness that a man cannot give. God has given me boldness to speak, and I will speak anywhere I go. If I have opportunity, I will warn women. This thing, this thing that the Queen of the Coast has entered the church she must go in the name of jesus because among the children of god they have people the sister they have people that that are ready to hear this message and change and the lord told me that i will go through fire one day i saw the angel of god raising the hand like this up and and gave me a road she have she gave me a, 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 a he gave me a road he said hold it i hold it then he pressed a button fire came he said you will pass through fire but fire will not burn you then he said take the road pass through the fire i passed through the fire and then the fire did not burn me then after i said hallelujah remember even the angels say hallelujah i know i will pass through fire i know people will hate me one day in my room as i was sleeping i saw somebody appear in my room a demon was sent to kill me i opened my eyes i stood up i said who are you he said he saw me in facebook because my testimony i put it in facebook he even gave me the name his name he said he was sent he was he was sent to kill me because of what i'm doing i said you have the audacity to come in my room i sent the fire of god to destroy that demon that demon was running as if fire is pursuing him i know the lord is with me my sister if you are doubting this message i beg you in the name of jesus you better repent repent before it's too late because god is sending me to warn all the sister in earth whether you are white whether you are chinese whether you are african this word is for you the word of god is for everybody female and male there is not there's no there's no black and white before god the word of god say you when you pray you cover your hair the word of god say you must not you know you, you you will not dress uh worldly the word of god say you must not put a uh, gold throw away all those gold all those jewelries all those trousers all those tight clothes all those i saw my 
my brethren, can you imagine? I went to a gathering, church. I saw choir people dressing. I, oh God, have mercy. They can, the devil has blinded the eyes of children of God. They cannot even see anymore. The Holy Spirit does not even speak to them again. Because they have carried away by the things of the world. You will see young sister singing with microphone. She says she's praising God with a tight, tight skirt. Even, even, even if the, even when the, as the, the skirt is tight, there is still another is open behind like this. And she's walking like this. She will say she's, she, wish born again. Wish born again. It is time we open our eyes. Brethren, either you are cold or hot. You cannot be in the middle. Either you are a child of God or not. If you are from the world, let the people know that you are from the world. If you are a child of God, let people know that you are a child of God. And let me tell you, I've, since this testimony, this message, sisters have been calling me all over the world. White like black. They are crying. But you, do you know who is persecuting them? The children of God. Pastors. Women pastors. A woman opened her mouth to a young girl that if you don't make up, you won't get married. Oh. <laughs> oh. A young girl want to please God with her body. You that that is a woman of God, pastor wife. You say that she should go and make up, look like Jezebel because she want a husband. What type of husband she will get? She can only get the type of husband that like outward appearance. Tomorrow it will be difficult for her to please God because when she want to please God, the husband will say, "Make yourself sexy for me, please." It is time we stop all this dirtiness. That is why the church is dirty. Jesus Christ, my church is dirty. All those things need to stop. Please, my sister, if you have heard this message, cry to God and repent. Ask God, because it's only God that can destroy the work of flesh in you. Hallelujah. He is there near you. Call upon Him, and He will rescue you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.